All right, well, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, as he mentioned, my name is Philip. This is Adam. We are from a company called HNTB. If you haven't heard of HNTB, we are a 110-year-old uh, civil engineering and architecture firm. We do a lot of work in transportation infrastructure. We also have um, a lot of work in sports venues as of recent years. We have locations all over the country. Um, our headquarters is in Kansas City. Um, we have some other large offices as well, like Chicago. We've got 250 employees there. You can see we're all over the East Coast. Um, and as of this year, we're in the neighborhood of 8,500 employees. So pretty, pretty large operation. Uh, I'll give you a quick rundown of some of the projects that we've done. Um, here's some major bridge infrastructure projects that we've done. You may be familiar with the Sixth Street Viaduct in, in LA, which was recently completed. We also do transportation infrastructure, lots of um, interchanges, highways, railways. We do a lot of bus lines as well. And then some of the stadium projects we've done. We did um, Allegiant Stadium in LA where the Super Bowl was recently played. We did Levi's Stadium, and we are currently working on the, uh, the new athletic stadium, which I believe just broke ground this week in, in Vegas. So uh, our team within the company is uh, called the Immersive Media Solutions. Uh, we're part of a department called Digital Transformation Solutions. Uh, and what we mean when we talk about immersive media, um, a lot of traditional AEC deliverables would be either uh, static images or videos. Uh, what we deliver are real-time 3D interactive environments, uh, with the goal being, kind of like Phil said, we work on these large, complex projects and being able to visualize them in 3D, being able to interact with them, uh, really helps people understand the projects, understand the details, um, again, of these really complex projects with lots of stakeholders. Um, within the company, we're a relatively small team. There's about six of us. Um, my background is more in the uh, 3D interactive side of things. I have about seven years of experience doing AR, VR, training, simulation, that sort of thing. Um, Phil, I don't know if you want to. Yeah, my entire career has been visualization in the engineering sector. Um, so prior to HNTB, I did 15 years of visualization for mechanical engineering, actually. So it was a pretty, pretty easy switch over once I started with HNTB. Yeah, but I'd say one of the really cool things about Cesium uh, is the fact that it allows a small team like us to work on visualizations for these really large scale projects. Um, so a lot of the work we do we call rapid visualization. Um, basically, it tends to be kind of before a design is formalized, um, when there are maybe some design alternatives. Um, and again, giving people a way to see what the project is going to look like before it's built, um, but also be able to respond to changes in the design, since again, it's not usually formalized at this point, um, being able to kind of quickly swap in and out models, update things, um, and again, our team uh, works in the Unity uh, engine uh, with, again, a lot of it uh, using the Cesium plugin and uh, Google 3D tiles. Um, so this is an example of what one of our visualizations looks like. Um, this is a, a, an ongoing work in progress uh, of uh, Interstate 375 uh, in downtown Detroit. Uh, basically, they are actually going to be removing uh, the large interstate and replacing it with uh, surface streets. Um, so we're, we have a few more examples we'll show you at the end, but this is the kind of work that we do. Again, the design model you see here is, is a 3D model based off of um, architectural uh, designs, uh, and then kind of everything in the background is all cesium. Um, but in addition to just Unity and Cesium, we've also built a number of custom tools, um, and I think I will hand it over to Phil to, to start talking about some of those. Um, so first I'll talk very briefly on our initial workflow when we start a new project. Um, all of our projects, we start with bringing in Cesium, um, and we find our, our focal point for that project and then we will use the, the cartographic polygons to remove any existing conditions that we're replacing with a incoming design model. Once we have that cut out, 
then we have to import the design model into the cesium environment in a geospatially accurate location. There's a couple ways that we approach that. Um, if, if we know it's just a single model and we know what the origin point of that model is in flat long coordinates, we can just set that to zero, zero, zero in unity. And then the cesium georeference um, mirrors that lat long coordinate. Um, sometimes we have to convert those coordinates. Uh, InfraWorks, for example, we get a lot of models out of there and they use state plane coordinates. So for that, we just use um, various websites that will do the conversion for you. Um, sometimes we have multiple models, which all will have their own reference point. So in that case, we use the cesium API where we can convert the incoming models coordinates um, to proper unity XYZ coordinates. Um, so uh, kind of once we get the model imported and, and the large parts of the cesium cut out, uh, another common thing we'll have to do is remove some of the smaller details. Uh, so a lot of times, again, anyone who's worked with the Google 3D tiles will know that uh, sometimes trees don't look great, light poles, things like that. Um, so what we did is we created a script. We call it the multi-box excluder. Basically, it allows you to uh, just add these little, basically they're just unity cubes um, to mask out some of these uh, pieces. Uh, you can also use it, for example, uh, since it uses uh, full 3D, you can use it to cut out, say, a bridge and leave the ground under it, which again, we use a lot because we'll be building a new bridge. So you can just replace the old one, still leave the terrain and everything else untouched. Uh, but then drop in your new model um, to replace the old one. Um, another thing, again, when you're trimming cesium, um, obviously you will leave a hole where you trimmed it. Uh, a lot of that will be filled with the design model, but sometimes there's something that's not included in the design model, say uh, grass or um, just any some sort of terrain. Um, so what we did is we built a tool that will fill in a, um, a polygon with a mesh. It's fully 3D. You can adjust the height. You can smooth it. Um, and basically, you can either use the cartographic polygons themselves, so you basically fit the hole exactly, uh, or you can just use uh, Unity's spline system to draw your own shape uh, and create your own mesh to kind of fill in these gaps. Um, another thing that we developed is our own custom water mesh shader. Um, obviously, if you look at the, the Google Tiles water, it's just flat shaded. There's no realism to it. Um, so what we do is we create a series of black and white geotip tiles in ArcGIS using a custom um, map style. Then we can export those geotiffs and host them on cesium ion. And then we read in those masks in order to separate the water from the land. And then from there, we go ahead and add the realism <coughs> excuse me, to the water. So you can see the workflow here. Uh, the first image is obviously the before, this default Google tile water. Then you can see the, the mask as it shows in ArcGIS, hosted on cesium ion, and then the after with the, the water shader applied. Um, another issue that uh, we've heard talked about is um, curvature. Um, a lot of times you will be given a model that is flat to the ground, which is as you want it. A model should be flat. Um, the problem is the Earth is not flat, um, which is generally not a problem if you're working on a smaller scale project. Um, but uh, when you're working on some of the larger scale projects that we've worked on, you will actually start to notice it. Um, here's an example of kind of one of the edges of our project uh, that we worked on recently. The alignment was about 27 miles long. So we aligned the height in the middle, but basically at each end it was, um, <clears throat> I think, uh, like 50 or so feet off the ground. Um, so we built a tool that will allow you to essentially bend the mesh along the, uh, the curvature of the earth. Um, there's also some additional, it just, again, everything, a lot of the things we use use uh, Unity splines. Um, you can adjust the height in the middle if you need for, say, mountains, hills, other things like that. Um, but basically to get your model to lie flat along the length of the alignment. Um, originally, this was a shader uh, in Unity, so basically just kind of a rendering trick. Um, but we ran into some issues with um, physics. We have uh, a lot of cars in our visualizations. So to be able to actually 
use the, uh, the mesh, we actually updated the tool, so now it just generates a new curved mesh, and you can just click a button and it'll just regenerate it uh, with whatever curvature you need. Uh, we also have some custom tools for placing trees. Uh, typically, this is more for the areas where we don't necessarily have full 3D tiles, um, more rural areas where you just have your terrain with a, a flat um, satellite image on it. So what we do is we use, um, we download LiDAR point cloud data from the USGS, and we load that into a software called Global Mapper, and that will um, detect the trees, it does feature detection on the LiDAR, and it can detect um, the width of the tree, the height of the tree, and it'll spit out um, lat long coordinates and dimensions for each tree. So we take that CSV, we pull that into Unity, and then we can automatically populate the entire area of trees. Um, and we have some, some uh, variables in there where if you know, a tree is between X and Y meters, then it's this type of tree. If it's a taller tree, it can be this type of tree, so there's a little more variation to it. Um, so th these are kind of the more uh, common tools that we use, um, but again, one of the really nice things about working with Cesium and working in an engine like Unity is that really any sort of need you have, uh, again, if you, you know, have, have the people on your team for it, you can just create whatever you need. So um, just a few more worth mentioning. Uh, like Phil said, we can uh, pull in tree data uh, for existing trees. Uh, we also created a tool that can um, take one of your uh, polygon, it's like a spline polygon, uh, and scatter trees within that. So for example, if a new area is being built, um, again, we use it a lot with the spline terrain tool. Um, so basically, if you are removing something, filling it with ground, you can also populate it with trees or rocks or, or kind of whatever you need. Um, another tool is that a lot of people do, uh, again, we are delivering these interactive 3D environments, uh, but a lot of people want uh, just a traditional render, just it's a little bit easier to share. Uh, so we created a tool that basically detects when cesium is finished loading and basically ties that into our uh, export process so that basically only when cesium is fully loaded will it advance the frame, so you get these really smooth uh, loading videos. Um, and finally, we could probably have a whole other talk about this, but we built a tool called IMQC. Uh, it's basically a QC tool that lets uh, stakeholders leave comments in the environment directly. So again, traditionally, you might deliver stills or video, someone would take screenshots, maybe they'd open it in Microsoft Paint and draw an arrow and say like, hey, this thing is wrong, or you know, at time code 342 in this corner of the screen, this should be that. Here they can literally just drag and drop comments uh, to the exact location in 3D space, uh, and then we, our team, can see it in the environment and uh, respond to it. Um, so I'll hand it back to Phil to kind of show off some of, uh, some of the projects we've worked on. Yeah, just to end up here, we'll, we'll show you some examples. Um, the first one is the Cape Cod Bridges. This is probably the first major project we use cesium for. Um, Cape Cod Bridges are two bridges uh, over the Cape Cod Canal that are they're pushing 100 years old, and they're looking to replace them. So this is uh, the round one deliverables, where there is 10 different configurations of interchanges uh, to the north and south of, of the two bridges. Um, so we did this real-time interactive where they could on the fly, change the configurations, and show the different options to the general public. Um, round two, they finalized those, those um, configurations for each bridge. So this is an example of one of the final configurations. I believe this is the Bourne North configuration. So these are the final configurations that they will be using when they, when they start construction on, on this project. Um, and even now, we're, you know, we're a year and a half in, we're still using the same project for further visualizations. Now we're doing what's called a visual assessment, where we're doing ground level renderings from uh, certain intersections and landmarks throughout the area to see what sort of visual impact the bridges will have on the area. Um, then just real quick, uh, this is a bus line down in San Antonio that we worked on. This is just a quick example. Um, these are just still renderings, but we took basically just a square block intersection, dropped it into cesium, and added a little, little bit of 
depth of field effect, and the cesium very nicely just fills in the background for us, so we don't have to do any post-processing on that. Um, this is uh, it's called I-490. This is in Chicago. Uh, it's also called the O'Hare Bypass. Basically, it connects two existing freeways um, alongside O'Hare Airport. Um, <clears throat> again, one of the things you can see here is, again, pretty much all of this except for the road is cesium. Um, and traditionally, if we were working on a project like this, we might have to hand model a lot of these buildings. Um, and you can just see how many there are and how time consuming that would be. So the fact that, again, this is all just built in with, with cesium is, is really nice. Um, and then just to kind of close off, this is that 27 mile project. I'm not gonna show you the whole thing. I have it a little <laughs> sped up here, so it's a little, I don't want anyone getting motion sick. Um, but again, um, all of the design model uh, is us. We have layers like, uh, again, showing traffic flow that you can turn on and off. Um, but again, all the rest is cesium, and it's just, again, really impressive. I think we have the culling distance set to like 10 kilometers or something like that. Um, and it's just really cool that, again, you can see kind of like the city off in the distance, and it just all looks really nice, and we didn't have to do any of that. So um, I think that's it for us. We'll, we'll leave a little bit of time in case there are any questions, but uh, thank you. Thank you.